Hello, this is David from davidcliveprice.com and this is the podcast edition of this week's Ezai number 11, Three Tips on How to Build Guangxi. The main business-related cross-cultural difference between the West and Asia is the importance of the long-term business relationship. What the Chinese call Guangxi, relationship, is at the heart of most Asian business deals, even though the Chinese think it is a unique part of their own culture. When Chinese or Asian business people meet for the first time, they begin to immediately build Guangxi. They will probably spend many hours drinking tea or discussing subjects that seem non-business to Westerners. The Chinese are not alone in Asia in using this process to assess people they might like to work with. This often makes results-driven Westerners very impatient. However, having a good network of connections in China, and in Asia in general, is the most important element of business success. Every Asian cultivates his or her own network of personal relationships in business, by which is meant networks with obligations. For Westerners, too, Guangxi relationships and networking often serve to smooth out operations, but there are crucial differences between the Western idea of networking and building relationships and the Asian system of Guangxi. It is therefore essential to work initially through a partner or intermediary who can not only make a formal introduction and vouch for the reliability of your company, but is also someone who teaches you how the Guanxi system works. Tip 1. The basics of networking. The best starting point is to think of personal relationships in Asia as a series of interlocking circles. Immediate family members make up the first circle, then extended family members, and then people from the same town or neighbourhood. School and undergraduate guanxi can play an important part in someone's later professional or business life, while more casual acquaintances, local shopkeepers and building attendants, etc., can make up a more peripheral, outer circle. Since non-Chinese have no guanxi networks in China, they are not part of these charm circles and, by definition, will find it difficult to build relationships or connections with the Chinese. The most they can hope for is to become a foreign friend. The same applies to business people entering other Asia markets like Japan, South Korea, or even Malaysia and Indonesia. However, being a foreign friend does not mean that you can afford to ignore the Guangxi networking system or treat it as peripheral to doing business in Asia. In many cases, Networking is the only way to achieve real business success and therefore has to be approached with commitment and careful study. Tip 2. How to network successfully. Guanxi is a bond of trust and understanding between two individuals that provides the key to networks of professional connections, the literal meaning of the word in Chinese, and contacts. In order to obtain the key, you have to recognise that the system is built on obligations and favours that play an informal but essential role in Chinese and Asian business. Guanxi building is not to be confused with the banqueting and drinking customs that surround and support it, even though these traditional habits of hospitality are used to build the personal connections that the Guanxi system eventually benefits. In many countries in Asia, the personal relationship is vital to the beginning of all serious negotiations. Tip 3. Building relationships. It is sometimes difficult to explain to Westerners that Asian business deals are often more based on relationships than on contracts or actual transactions. For the Westerner, a personal relationship may build up over time in an organic way but the important issue is to sign a contract at the first stage as towards completing other possible contracts. However, exactly the opposite applies in Asia. 
only after the process of guanxi or network building has taken its course and strong personal relationships are achieved, will the Asian party move on to consider a commercial transaction. In other words, the rule book about not mixing business with pleasure or the personal has to be thrown out of the window. The route to a prof profitable business relationship in China and in Asia is usually approached from the opposite direction. For the Western business person seeking to launch or expand business in Asia, the network of Guanxi is not only important to your business, in many cases it is your business. I'd love to hear from you if you have tips or comments about doing business in China or in other parts of Asia. You can leave them at my blog, www.davidcliveprice.com forward slash blog. And of course, please subscribe if you want more on the ground intel like this. Just add yourself to the subscription box on www.davidcliveprice.com and you can also subscribe to this podcast on iTunes. <laughs>